welcome back best friends welcome back to the channel last week was such an amazing week for us in the channel right we caught over 200 pips on euro aud alone and like about 60 pip sales on gj and another 30 pip buys on gj just last week all from the analysis that i shared right here on youtube in the channel linked up here so if you're not subscribed yet ensure you are subscribed to the channel so you stop missing out on great great moves like that and especially for this week we have such an amazing week lined up for us this week i have crazy crazy setups i'm about to share with you guys on here and really you should be part of the telegram community because i end up sending most of my trades into the community telling the people where i'm looking to enter where i'm looking to exit and also take my profits so ensure you join the telegram community linked in the description be below last week was an amazing week this week is even going to be greater trust me when i say that this week is going to be a banger i mean it when i say it so ensure you're subscribed to the channel and also part of the community so without further ado let's get started with this video yeah okay cool so as always i have to start from the weekly but before i do that i have to clear my chat and then we can all proceed sounds good dj okay. pumped last week didn't it? It did. Glad we all That's made it. money. Um, <laughs> it's like we caught the lows as well, bro, right, from the bottom. Do you remember? Yeah, we I caught did. both the highs, the lows. We we caught the sales and the buys as well. So it was pretty amazing. It's just yeah. going to name this anything so that I don't waste anybody's time. So again, on the weekly time frame, we can see how um JJ is still remaining very bullish, right? So it means that. If anything at all, we should still be looking for more buys. And last week, if it, it failed to create um a lower eye, right? You see our price yet to create an higher low, right? So we may see that happening this week, and we may not see that happening. But whichever way happens, we have to prepare for both. If it happens, what are we going to do? If it doesn't happen, what are we going to do? So for the first thing we want to do now that we know what the trend is is bullish, and price may continue to push higher up until it reaches a major um resistance point which it, it seems to be trading at right now looking from this area right price seems to be trading at a very key level right here from january 2015 which price has not been to since um i think um 20 january 2016 as well and if price is trading there now we may see price react a bit before any other thing happens other than that I, next thing i can see here would be one moment would be a possible um price reversal towards this area to retest you know possibly create that um higher low that we did talk about you know yeah or at the same time this looks like a price point where price has reacted twice which means that we may also see price react to that price area before it maybe comes back to this area even break below it but like i always say we are not trying to predict the market we just want to react to whatever happens and for us to be able to do that we have to prepare for both ways if it if it long if price continues to be bullish we have to prepare for it and if it is not bullish we have to also be prepared for it now this is my own plan right for me to even consider going long on gj i need to see price flip above this um key level over here from 2015 right because if price is approaching it it means that something is likely going to happen even if it's just for a bit we may see price do something like this and then continue to like um, pump or whatnot but then i don't want to get caught like um, i don't want to get stopped on it so i want to see a clear break above this area first what's that thing again I want to see price break above this area pretty well with a strong candle and then i can take the retest and then hold on to the next major um resistance area which we have to figure out where that will likely be so that we can also have our plan for that now i think this is it right here over here let me know if you guys are still following yeah all good all right cool yeah i just i just muted myself thank you guys i appreciate it 
so we may see price rally up to 180.313 if in a situation where price is able to like strongly flip above this key level right here from 2015 then we may see price go up there but the next thing that may happen if that doesn't happen would be for price to um probably trade up to this area for monday and then we can see like bears probably step in and push price back down to this area and maybe it's going to continue from there we don't know we can't tell but like i said that's more of a long term thing because if that was to happen that would be about a 370 380 plus pips move towards the downside so if that happens i think that um, the market may take some time to cool off before any other major thing happens and it's likely going to take um, the price the whole week to get to that area and why i'm thinking that way is because we have the bank of japan set to speak and i think on friday friday night around 5 30 a.m our time london nigerian time um the bank of um, bank of japan is set to speak around that ar around that point it's still tentative because they don't have one permanent time they always use based off my experience and what i've always seen most times the news comes out like 10 minutes prior or 10 minutes after the set time so um i would say between 5 30 to 6 a.m we expect the bank of japan to do something or say something and based off what i've always seen them do i don't think they are going to raise interest rate just yet but fingers crossed i'll continue to monitor the news and see if anything changes and then i'm going to update you guys but if they don't do it i think uh, if they don't raise interest rates which is quite negative at the moment we may see price trade up to this area um, 180 there about but if they do we may see a strong japanese yen and it will push price maybe for that down towards this area if that happens but that's still like long time still up until friday bef before we see that happen so even if price is really going to drop massively it's still going to be maybe around next week there about before that happens so this is for the weekly time frame let's drop down to daily and see what's going on on there so on the daily time frame as well we can see our price is really still bullish right really really indicating a strong bullish presence however you would notice that the candles are beginning to become smaller right and based off the candlestick anatomy that we have done in class this week what can you say about that you can see that Ex exactly we can see that the bulls are beginning to lose power just a bit and also remember how i spoke about price gaps in class last week look at how this week has opened open with a price gap see this is where last week closed look at where this week is opening at right okay that's a big price gap that how many um, 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 that good few pips in it <laughs> about 32 30 pips. pips so it's Jesus. indicating something right there's the weakness is be becoming more apparent so we oh may see God. a possible reversal to the downside but then before that happens it may take a while and it may also happen sooner than we think the bank of japan is quite unpredictable with their movements they could decide to step into and intervene with the japanese yen before friday they could decide to just wait till friday before they do whatever it is they have planned to do but either ways fingers crossed i am likely not going to trade gj much this week until boj says or does something but then i'm going to keep my eyes on it on the daily level let's see if we can find any um major area of interest here it appears to me to still be the areas that we can find on the weekly levels that are still here on the daily so i don't think i want to start plotting a new level just so that i don't keep my chart messy but then i think something interests me about this price point right here and why that is so is because for a couple of days we, see, we can see our price had a challenge breaking above that area and even when it did it still came back to retest right here with this candle which would be thursday before it started going to the top so that's quite an interesting area i'm going to keep an eye on it and if we were to drop down to the four hour level i think that level may be a lot more valid which i'm going to do so right away yeah and it appears to be very valid on the four hour level as well over here acted as resistance over here same thing over here support resistance not and then over here acted as quite a good support area right after it created this double bottom here not not um a major double bottom there about but let's just call it a double bottom right and um all of this pretty much summed up the week the movement for last week and we can see price is likely likely going to push up to this area before we can see anything significant happen so i'm look i'm very much interested to see how price reacts in this area if this area holds right let's say that this area holds 
if this area holds and price is rejected we are likely going to see price come back to trade up to this area thereabouts before we can see this area but if that area doesn't hold let's say that price is able to flip it then we can see price um retest that area and we can take the long towards the next um resistance area that we found on the weekly level and i believe that would be all for gj any questions so far uh, oh good all right, cool. no, no questions from me all right so um we can see the price jump quite more clearly over here right yeah. you guys can see that price jump yeah so we it's kind of indicating a possible um volatility this week on gj but fingers crossed we are not trying to predict i'm not trying to call the top or the bottom well either ways we stay prepared all right so let's move on to the next currency pair boy your was was crazy last week damn it uh, so we're on the weekly time frame now, right? Let's see. Uh, first thing I can notice is price rejecting off this level, beginning to dump and creating some sort of um, a lower eye over here. If I am to pull up the trend line from this area, you would see why I'm considering that to be a lower eye. I'll be an higher low. Sorry, <laughs> those words get mixed up sometimes, you know see like um a low point higher eye higher low higher eye and then a bit of a higher low kind of maybe not don't care um that being said let's see why did price get rejected off that area in the first place oh if we were to move back towards the left hand side you can see how for a couple of times price has rejected towards ar around that price point and ends the movement towards the downside so we have a strong um, resistance area over here on the weekly time frame. We can see price rejecting off of this weekly level right here, right? So it means that we may see a bit of a, a selling pressure towards the downside for a bit. But then if you guys pay attention, right, you would see one of those type of candles that we learned in class last week. Guys, uh, what's it called? it looks like a gravestone yeah it's a doji not actually a doji because the opening price and the closing price differ look at it yeah that the one i'm pointing at right now it's 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 almost a long legged yeah but then the open price and the closing price differ now i also yes. want you guys to note something this happened on the weekly time frame so it means that for a whole week neither buyers or sellers were in control of price and that happened after this aggressive bull move towards the upside which was after the royal bank of new zealand two weeks ago right okay, yeah, yeah. now we can see our price now came back Alpha. Alpha. yeah say that again what did you say all right so i said that this massive bullish candle towards the upside this one right here that i'm pointing yeah. at happened after um the royal bank of new zealand two weeks ago right that yeah. one that i posted that trade that one in the morning yeah the one that happened in the morning yeah this particular one right here of royal bank of new zealand interest oh, no, rate you, yeah you, you yeah you bought that one i remember yeah so now couple rat, couple rat. <laughs> so the following week after that we can see neither buyers or sellers were given into like were given in for uh, either a buying pressure or a bullish pressure it was much of an indecision and then this immediate past week we can see how sellers kind of took control of price for a bit but then you can see our price is now trading towards this support resistance area on the weekly time frame yeah. also third confluence we can also see our price is in a bit of an uptrend and our price has already created a new higher low right so which yeah. means that the most likely thing that is going to happen would be price bouncing off this area to create a new IRI. What happens if it breaks through the uh, trend line though? Do you reckon it will dump? What did you say? If it breaks through the trend line, you think it's going to dump? Yeah, if it does that, it may dump. If it does that, it may likely not dump. Now you said, know that I said that the most likely thing that is going to happen I did not say the most definite thing that is going to happen. 
<laughs> right? And always know that when we're starting our analysis, we are still trying to pull together any information we can find. And then when we're done checking every single time frame, we can now say, oh, this is what is most likely or most definitely going to happen. Also, I want you guys to know that this week we have a lot of major news coming out. We have the um, we have CPI coming on Tuesday. We have um, FOMC on Wednesday. We have European Central Bank on Thursday, and then we have BOJ on Friday. Monday is pretty silent, so we may see a bit of a slow movement tomorrow. We may not, don't know, don't care. Either ways, I'm going to be prepared for it. <laughs> are you are you not you're not trading tomorrow then? You're chilling. No, no, no. I'm going to be on the chart, but I, I may not call any trade until I see a major volume step into the market. Okay. Yeah. I've got a busy, busy day tomorrow, so no. that, would, that would be kind of good, but kind of <laughs> not. Either ways, we're still going to stay prepared. <laughs> so over here, we have yeah, price right. trading at a major um, resistance now turned support area, right? And we may see price bounce up this level on the lower time frame. And also, we have the Euro European Central Bank on Thursday. Note that the base currency for this currency pair we're looking at is Euro, which means that this currency pair is most definitely going to get affected by the news on Thursday. And based on what I've gathered so far, I am expecting quite a bullish move on Euro on Thursday. I'm expecting Euro to be quite very bullish on Thursday. Even if it's just momentarily for, an, for a minute or five, it's likely going to be bullish. So that being said, I am like really, really looking forward to price, you know, pushing towards the upside for a bit this week. Just based off of those conferences, we have price trading at um, a major support resistance area. We have an uptrend going on and then we have this massive engulfing bar and we all know what that means. I've talked about the candlestick anatomy and I've also talked about uh, a bullish engulfing bar and the psychology behind it. We typically always have that massive engulfing bar and then price coming back to which is 50% of that candle and just look at where price is at right now, almost at the 50% of that candle, right? Yeah. See, so it means that we are likely going to see price continue towards the upside to create an II. That's about three, four conferences right now. I wasn't counting. And then to put um, in perspective the fact that we have a lot of major news coming out this week and also the yeah. fact that CPI is on Tuesday, which I'm predicting no i said predicting uh a weak dollar on tuesday based off the fact that i expect that inflation should have cooled off further and if that happens it means that the federal reserve is going to f be forced temporarily to not raise interest rates or at least re uh, reduce how much they are going to raise interest rates which is quite good for the market a bit it means that people are going to have some more spending power temporarily and if that happens it means that we can see euro rally since the dollar is going to be weak the dollar index basically is going to be weak so we may see the euro rally on tuesday and wednesday and again on thursday we have ecb and i'm expecting that the policy is going to favor euro and further strengthen euro so there we have it i'm expecting a bullish movement on euro nzd on the weekly time frame let's drop down to the daily and see if there's anything that would interest us over there So on the daily time frame, I can see our price is bouncing off of these areas, right? Kind of like a support resistance area going on around here. All right, so we saw our bulls try to take over over here, right? And then the bears stepped back in with this bit of rejection candle and also continue with this massive bearish candle towards the downside. So my speculation, note I said speculation, would be that price would try to break out of this support area for a bit a bit some sort of stop on in there about before it returns above it and then take a retest before we can see that real good move towards the upside yeah and why i'm thinking in that manner is based off of this quote and unquote confusing price action going on and also because i see a bit of a daily level around here can you guys see it too yeah so we may see price trade up to that level first before we can see it return back here before continuing to you know rally towards the upside right here this is my um opinion currently on euro nzd but if that doesn't happen let's say that price breaks below that area 
in a situation where all of these confluences don't work out or the dynamics change before then and price remains below this area right it remains strongly below this area i want to take a sell only after price is breaking below this area right here and then i may have some more sales at the retest of this trend line towards the next um, major structural price point or area which is around here one seven yeah is it, is it not a bit further up just above one seven one uh 171 is actually quite likely as well but this is more major compared to 171 we have more price action going on here compared to 171 look at this one two three um bit of should i say four five and then six seven and for 171 it's not as frequent a bit further up that 17 you see you got them candles uh the wicks coming down this way a little bit yeah yeah that wick a little bit further down further yeah. down right here a bit further up a little bit further up you see they got the wicks there yeah that oh yeah we we do have those wicks there and it's actually valid as well because we have acting as support over here we resistance i mean acted as support over here and acted as support over here but compared to this one where price has held very strongly acting as resistance over here acting as resistance over here acting again as resistance over here, acting again as resistance over here. Every time price tried to break above that level, it sent it back down. And when price was eventually able to break above it, when the bears tried to push price below it again, see how strongly it held. The next time bears yeah. tried it again, see how strongly it held. And again, again, you see, a couple more times over, it held. You see, which is why yeah. I, am pay, I would pay more attention to this area than this. This is actually also a very valid area. But in a situation where the bears take full control of this currency pair, then we may see price maybe move up, move down to this area before any other major thing happens. Yeah. All right, cool. Moving on to the next currency pair. We have Euro Odd. I find my like favorite pair to trade. I love this pair so much. Can't explain why, honestly. It's just perfect 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 currency pair to trade like zero stress if it wants to move it's going to move and if it's not going to move it's not going to move that's why i love it like so perfect all right so on euro odd quite the same sentiment i have with um euro nzd is what i have with euro odd which means i am a bit bullish on euro nzd um euro odd this week based off those fundamentals that i talked about in um while we were analyzing euro nzd right we have ecb set for this week cpi um fomc and then boj which really i don't expect too much influence on euro odd in any way well um let's look at it from a structural standpoint now we know that fundamentally the sentiment is quite bullish which means that now we have to use or find a way to find an entry using technical analysis and over here we see we can see our price is rejecting off of this weekly level quite strongly and has been causing price to jump ever since and also how we have this all right so um, on the weekly level we can see our price is now trading below um uh, a previously support area but now acting as resistance over here acted as resistance over here acted as the same over here acted as the same but when price broke above it acted as support but did not hold for long and also we can see our price is trading below it quite strongly with really really strong um bearish candle to the downside and our price seems to be approaching this major support area right here on the weekly level right so it means that if the fundamentals don't step in and cause a major price reversal we may see price trade up to this level over here at um, 1.57104 and 1.53729 which um appears to be 100 200 plus pips at first and then 500 plus pips next which i strongly doubt based off the for every fundamentals that we have going on this week so i'm really really bullish on euro pairs this week highly bullish that doesn't mean i'm just going to jump in, into a trade without uh, a plan or without um, without risk management or waiting for price action to tell me to right you know i always want price action to move first and tell me what it wants to do and then i follow along i don't try to predict anything i just go along with the chat yeah so um this is the plan or this is what i'm expecting a strong rejection above this level over here on the lower time frame say one hour 
down to like five fifteen minutes and then i want a clear rejection on like one hour and then i look for my entry on between five and 15 minutes and then i can take my first profit over here and then wait for the news to step in which i believe would happen later in the week around on, on thursday around 1 45 no 1 15 pm on thursday i think and then we can have more entries around here towards this side on thursday taking the long so in total that will be about um 100 oh shit <laughs> now nah, i'm scared <laughs> this is an unbelievable number <laughs> this is an unbelievable number this is unbelievable who is buying the lambo of this move um on the daily time frame i'm pretty much still expecting um i'm expecting the same to happen i expect a, a strong rejection of these levels right and then expect um if you get into this buys take some profit around 1.6 um six zero four three seven and then further profits around 1.61625 and then when price breaks above this area we can have more buys i'm expecting this move in particular to happen on thursday actually i'm really really right. expecting this move to happen on thursday and then we can so have you... more profits taking so... right here um over here i can i am seeing price coming back to test this area before anything as well and then entries will be when price breaks above this open and then over here so this is what i'm expecting so okay. on okay, nice. euro odd i'm expecting something like this hoping for the rejections not to be like crazier than this anyways but we're on four hours so expect that stop loss will be a bit wide i don't pick my yeah. entries i don't pick my stop loss on four hours i'd rather at most pick it on one hour at most on the one hour time frame so okay. i expect this type of move about one to ten risk to reward for the week which is honestly not bad at all all right guys that's been it for today um i hope you enjoyed this one and you learned a lot and that you were prepared for the week coming ahead and you know how to work your way around the chat this week so um ensure you like this video if you enjoyed the video and you found it useful and informative also make sure you're subscribed to the channel because i've got massive giveaway coming at 100 subscribers right i'll be keen five subscribers from the channel to give them something really massive which i will not disclose now until we hit 100 subs so ensure you're subscribed to the channel also join the telegram community so you don't miss out on any updates on any trade updates and signal at all so that's been it guys i'll catch you guys in the next video peace out